Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box Masterclass session. This is session four and we're going to be looking at import and export. So here we are in Planner. Uh, we're going to talk about tasks first of all, but the same thing applies to risks and issues and we'll have a look at that afterwards. Um, we have obviously the data here within our Planner file, the SPN, and we can see the task information and the Gantt chart that's derived from it as well as the milestone and calendar views. Um, now whatever we're looking at, and again this comes back to views that we talk covered in section one and uh, whatever view is currently applying controls the columns of data that we see in the model so there are actually quite a lot more than this of course there's information about um, the costs associated with the tasks and many other things um, and we've chosen which columns and in which order and therefore if I want to just get my data out and use it temporarily without having to bring it back in I can sim simply come to here and do copy task list as CSV to clipboard like that and I'll be able to open up Excel and drop it straight into Excel and I'll get the data exactly as it was shown in here. That's great but I can't bring it back in from that route and the reason is that I might be running a view which has a very minimal set of data perhaps just the task name and its finish date for example well that's not enough to then recreate the plan properly with afterwards so in that case we're going to be using instead the import and export menu up here now I've already done a video uh, previously uh, which is in the playlist um, about importing tasks from Microsoft Project and you'll see that that's those two items down here import tasks from file export tasks to file um, that uses the um, MS Project Exchange format so that you can bring things into Microsoft Project and take things out and put them into Microsoft Project. But we're going to be using this middle option here, import export tasks from CSV. So it brings up this form which shows us um, the data model and we can load, and this is the best way of doing it to be honest, is you get a plan, it might be an empty one or one with just one task in. You do load from current plan like that so you can see the full data model, as I say, it's quite a bit more extensive than you might generally see on your view um, uh, with obviously the core things, but also some other things like the outline levels, and date created and all sorts of other things, colors of bars if you're going to use colors, etc. Um, and you can see that data here. Now you can then copy this and again, of course, just then paste it into Outlook. So we'll just go paste like this. And now we get that much more complete set of data um, showing here with all the costs etc and we can now take that and I could if I want to you know get rid of the the data underneath put in my own data copy and paste it you know or rearrange the columns from whatever data source I'm bringing it from many people currently have their plans um, created in spreadsheets for example and they're wanting to upgrade into something more sophisticated like planner and therefore you can um, arrange a macro which just rearranges your columns accordingly and drops it into here and um, uh, and so you know it's pretty straightforward you don't have to fill everything in of course but there's a you know a typical minimum set that you'll need to bring that back in and make it a workable plan so that's pretty straightforward we can then do the exactly the same thing in reverse copy the spreadsheet come to here and paste and that'll paste that data back onto the form and then we can import it either as an append or replace so append will add it to the end of any existing task that you already have in your planner file and replace will replace it as a new set of tasks so if somebody doesn't have planner and can't install it for some reason you can always send them the data in a spreadsheet if you want to they can update it they can bring it back you can put it back into your plan it's not really designed with that in mind but that's the sort of thing people have done on occasion so this is a great way of getting data out in a very comprehensive format and then also back in again if you want to. Now that's as we discussed for tasks it's exactly the same thing for risks and issues um, with a slight twist on it so if I come to import export and we'll choose risks first of all from CSV here. Now here we have two different forms because there is the risks and then there are the responses which might be associated with the risks and there may be multiple responses so we can see here for example risk ID 11 has two responses and risk ID 9 has no responses so we do the same thing again we can copy that put it into a spreadsheet update it however we want to and then bring it back in again of course when we bring it back in here it must match up against the lookup list so you need to match the terminologies here 
um, in terms of the pick list items for status and categories and impacts and all those sorts of things. But that's not really too difficult to do. Um, so exactly the same idea. Copy and paste it out. Copy and paste it back in once you've changed it or modified it or extended it in whatever way you want to. And of course, again, you'll need to then tie the risks to that. And that's using the risk IDs here. So that'll be risk ID 11. It'll have its two risks in the bottom part here. Fairly straightforward sort of thing. And obviously issues works in exactly the same way. Again, we've got import and um, oh, we've got issues and responses. Uh, and again, they're tied together by using the issue ID. OK, um, I hope you found that useful. Um, the obviously the devil is in the detail here in terms of getting formats right um, and columns in the right order and headers headers you know set up correctly so that it will bring it all back in but the best way of doing that like I say is to do load from plan copy that into a spreadsheet then you've got exactly the format you need to load your data on and then you can import it from there okay thank you very much